There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's either full speed or off side. so disappointed because I had had all of these already in my management training. The interesting thing about Silicon Valley and, and the high-tech companies is in their management practices, they're so much farther ahead than we give them credit for. They are already working on things, and most anthroposophists don't know this, about brotherhood in the economic realm. Yeah. You don't know this. Bill Bottom, Bill Bottom did that a long time ago already. Yes, but here we have these companies, major competitors, fighting for every dollar in the marketplace, and they get together, in some cases to set standards that they've all developed to, so all of their hardware and software is interconnectable. And of course, we still don't have that for everything, like, you know, my power plug for my iPhone won't work on your, um, no. you know, your other phones. But, um, but software that's being developed for the cloud, and I was part of something called OpenStack, and companies were donating millions of lines of code to become standard code that you could just download for free and then build upon that and add functionality. And if you did, you were supposed to ship it back into the source code. And it would be tested out and so on for free. And everything is being developed, sorry, just everything is being developed according to, supposedly, the needs of the consumer. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a consumer's board that's saying, we want this functionality, we want this. And they're building it. I'm sorry, you're? It's like Linux was developed. Yeah, and yeah. Ubuntu, and Linux, Ubuntu too. Right. From Linus. Yeah. <laughs> and Open Office you can get for free. Right. I mean, all, the, all sorts yeah. of, you know, and maybe you're only paying $2.99 or $1.99 or $0.99 cents for some apps that you can download, but a lot of them are free. And I've got maybe 50 apps, and I probably paid for only two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, can they enter our feeling lives? Let's take a look, and this gets into our sex spots and so on, but we have a lot of fear. There's a lot of Elon Musk's and Stephen Hawking's who are saying, we've reached the point where we better start asking, can we keep artificial intelligence safe for humanity? And what's interesting is these same people that said that were voted into the Luddite community by those who say, we don't have to worry about this. So this moral question that we were looking at before is really at the forefront in this whole area. Do we continue to develop artificial intelligence without safeguards? So to me, it's a very much the same question that was asked by Rachel Carson and by um, oh, come on. Um, the sister of the baby doctor. Um, yeah, <laughs> Marjorie Spock. Marjorie Spock, right. Because yeah. she was the biodynamic farmer. She was the one that started it. She's the one that started it by suing her town in Long Island mm -hmm. um, for spraying for mosquitoes and other mm -hmm. sorts of things. Marjorie Spock. Now we're coming back, the, the Zika virus scare how do they mm -hmm. want to treat it? They want to put insecticide, larva But that sides, isn't it. That isn't the it. The, the babies are born with a small like head or no way. brain or something, but they, they, it comes from, from glyphosate and all the other poisons that we, because in North America, people are born with smaller brains too. And what does so. it mean? Yeah, these are very fascinating questions. And so if this is true in the physical world, is it true in the etheric world? Is it true in the astral or soul realm? Can we pollute those? And 
these are very real and very deep moral questions. And fear is how most of us are approaching it. So I've got a bunch of the movies in this book here where they really, really uh, work on fear. I loved Alfred Hitchcock movies. I loved them. I loved to be scared out of my mind and I wouldn't take a shower for a week after I <laughs> see. <laughs> Psycho. Psycho, right, yeah, that was something else. So, um, and, and this is what Steiner also was saying. We can't allow this fear, but that's what's playing in. Because sorry, when man. we fear it, we don't approach it. And it's Ariman. I mean, that's right. the gift of Ariman. Gift of if Ariman. you overcome it, then you then you get strength. But all these amazing people who are out there in the forefront of technology, Hawkins and Musk and Gates, they're all concerned about it. Why? Why? Yeah. Because the, 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 the fear is, is that um, without some kind of safeguards built into especially the open software, software, that somebody could add something where a machine in, in its future will say, okay, I have this dilemma. I should either, okay, here's the case. Here, here's the case, the self-driving cars. Oh yeah. Okay? Mm. And you're, the, the self-driving car is going down the road and a ball is rolling out with a child following it. And coming in the other lane is a car with four people in it. And the only options it has then, because it can't stop in time, is to run over the child or drive into the car with four people in it. And it makes a decision. It has to make a decision it has to in make the decision. moment. It doesn't have time to ask you, yeah. what should I do? It has to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And so artificial intelligence are getting these things built into them today. Would it be any different than a human having to make a decision? Yeah, of course there's a difference. Don't you think there's a difference? I think a human will think of a third way. I'll go in the ditch. <laughs> right. Will machines have this self-preservation like Hal had in the movie 2001? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to assume that the machine has another human in it. Right. Might have. The Might other have thing, and Nikonar Perlis brought this up at this Moral Technologies Conference, which is there has never been a piece of software ever written that was without some bug. Never. Always. It's always. Always. Bug. And if it was perfect today, it's got a bug tomorrow yeah. because everything is changing. You can't put your foot in the river, same river twice. The river changes. Mm -hmm. Life is moving on all the time. And so software that may be working one day, doing the right thing, tomorrow it's going to do the wrong thing. So what does the other side say that our line of Luddites, you know, what's, what's their position? Don't do it. Don't build this artificial intelligence. The, the, the extreme Luddites would say, I don't want it in my life. Right, but what's the other side say that, that there's no... Oh, the artificial intelligence there? people? Yeah. They say, you're being a Luddite. <laughs> it's, you know, let's just open this up and see what happens. And, and basically, they're taking the, the position that we're fragile beings, we're carbon based, and we're going to go extinct one day. So we're building those beings who will carry on the higher aspirations of humanity. <laughs> and they will become human. But that's not so far from the truth. Who are going to be humans on Jupiter? Right. We won't look but like this. On Jupiter, we won't have material. Everything of the mineral kingdom will dissolve away at the end of Earth, but he doesn't say what happens to the fallen ethers, and he doesn't say if something new will arise. I think we as human beings will be co-creators there. But I think we'll be living in the etheric realm. But the sub we will be. Yeah, but the people have fallen. But the human stage will have some, something that it's built upon. But it's sub-nature. But, right, because if you look at this progression, Old Moon didn't have physical substance. 
but it built a theory. Earlier than that, there was no etheric in the old sun. And so you have this progression that makes sense that Jupiter would be somewhere in this, what we call fallen ethers and something that creates a foundation. But, but uh, what I'm saying is, I don't see how machines would be there at all because <clears throat> um, some of us would be living in the etheric realm, others would be living in the right. sub nature. There's no, there's no space for machines. But the question is, between now and the end of Earth evolution, what yeah, happens to those beings that are being pushed up through the Aramonic mm -hmm. realm mm -hmm. into our lives? So are they going to inhabit machines? Will we give them a home there? So you're talking pre-Jupiter. Pre-Jupiter, mm -hmm. Earth. Mm -hmm. Well, we, and maybe we are being controlled by someone else, and then maybe we will be the ones that are controlling we can get into ET stories and so on <laughs> like that, too, yeah. So um, a huge change in computing happened when Apple came out. Totally different approach to computing and the whole movement away from supercomputers, cold technology, everybody was a number, to something that became personal and people began an emotional relationship. And that's why my, they, sorry? That, that's why they stopped them. They tried to stop them a couple of times and they couldn't stop them in the end. We brought out all this technology anyhow. I, I worked for a company called Digital Equipment Corporation at the time these were coming out. And our CEO said, why would anybody want their own computer? or mini computers. They completely missed the boat because digital was in the position to become that actor. But they missed it. And Microsoft, of course, arose as the operating system for those that were built on IBM PCs, but those, because it was IBM, carried this cold, yucky kind of computing Whereas artists, artists mm -hmm. fell in love with the Apple. And they kept saying to us over here who were working on these IBM PCs and thinking this was really cool, they kept saying, look at all the work. I can do this with one button push. And you're taking an hour to do what I just do. Mm -hmm. okay. I can integrate movies and pictures and, and you guys are struggling with all this and you're buying all this software that comes costs hundreds of dollars and it comes free with mine. Now, haven't, isn't that really the, the peak, though, of how we've harnessed the Luciferic and the Aramonic and, and created a smartphone? Of course. And, and, and the only piece that's missing is the consciousness of the Christ that we use it and it doesn't use us. Yeah. yeah. Well said. And nothing so, else, mm -hmm. Nothing's going to stop the, the, the onslaught of technology. So, you so could say then that it. into this Aramonic creation, these guys brought Lucifer yeah. to balance it. What, what comes to mind for me is I think of what Spanish said about inheritance. Is, about uh, inheritance? Inheritance, people okay. That, oh, I'm trying to help the camera, so it speak really loudly. The people say that, oh, I have an inheritance now. Now I can take it easy. I got it made. But Steiner says it's quite the opposite. We have a monetary bank. inheritance. Yeah, a monetary inheritance. So if you get this inheritance, then you have to work twice as hard to develop yourself spiritually. Right. So develop yourself as a human being. It's not that, oh, now I can just relax. I've got it made now. It's like, oh, now I have to really get exactly. down to work. And then all the technology is the same. So we get all this technology that's supposed to help us coast, you know, surf on the, on the top of the waves, but it's quite opposite. We don't translate now we that. have to work twice as hard. Right. And translate that now into genetic inheritance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the same story. Capacity. With capacity. Okay. Yeah. But Steiner also said, um, because the way that politics is going and the money, the way it's going and the GMOs and everything, he also said that um, you, um, Armand has to give us the tools 
to fight like or to deal to deal with that. I mean, we wouldn't be able to um, uh, have a GMO rally, let's say, in May on May 21st, without.